Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Auto Amateur. In this video, we're talking steering wheels. Pretty excited about this one. Let's go check it out. Well guys, another mod video, and yes, steering wheels. This is one of several mods that I've got going on at the moment with my car. You can just about see that the front bumper is hanging off and the new bumper is sitting on the back. Got a new gear shift going in with carbon fiber. So there are a couple of different things going on right now, but this video is all about the steering wheel. And for something that's in the car that you look at, that you touch at, you know, it's a high touch area. I love the fact that now this is something that it's sort of very unique to me and matches the, the styling changes that I've been doing on the inside of the car. Now, what made me think about replacing my steering wheel? Well, a couple of months ago, doing a podcast with my friend Rene at Dutch 911, he was telling me about a company in the UK uh, that refurbished his 997 steering wheel. He showed me a photo of it, and because he was so excited about it and, and it looked so cool, I thought about doing the same thing. Now, uh, because so many delays have happened to shipping internationally, for me over the past year with COVID, I was a little reluctant to send my wheel to the UK um, because, you know, it could be sitting there for six months uh, in an airport waiting to get transferred like some of my packages unfortunately have done. Uh, so I looked around the, com the country for a domestic, um, a, a domestic supplier and I came across Craft Customs in Texas. Uh, a guy called Carter and his uh, family and friends run that business and they do hundreds and hundreds of steering wheel upgrades every year for any number of different cars. They've done loads of different generations of Porsches. They've done Ferraris. They've done Toyotas, you know, the full spectrum of steering wheels. Um, and they've very kindly made us some footage today where they show us the disassembly of the steering wheel and then actually wrapping it in leather and stitching it. So if you hang on till the very end of the video, you'll get to see that full blown disassembly and installation after the credits drop at the end of the video. Now in this video, we're gonna start by taking out the steering wheel. So I shot the before footage uh, about a month ago when this whole journey began. Uh, and then today, we're actually gonna put it back in. No knives are gonna be involved in this particular steering wheel video. For those of you that enjoyed my uh, knife-related 997 steering wheel video, this is not gonna be a repeat of that, I hope, at least. So let's get to it. Um, let's get the, uh, the steering wheel out, or at least let's click our fingers and go back in time and look at the process of re removing the steering wheel. And then we're gonna get this new one installed. Now, before we put the steering wheel into the car, let's just talk a little bit about what I wanted uh, for the wheel. So the leather has been completely replaced uh, and it's just black leather as expected. There are other options where you could have maybe perforated leather here uh, where you hold it um, and then solid leather 
the rest of the way around. I've just gone for the standard leather. I've gone for red deviated stitching um, and it's a baseball style stitching. There are five or six different stitching types that you can go for. I've also gone for the, the red notch in leather at 12 o'clock as well. Certainly beats the 3M tape that I had there previously. Um, so that's it, black leather, deviated red stitching and the red 12 o'clock notch. You can go for Alcantara, you can go for a mixture of Alcantara and leather. You can go for carbon if you wanted to. Trust me, I thought about carbon fiber, but this is what I went for. But it looks absolutely phenomenal. I can't wait to see what it looks like when we actually get it in the car. So uh, let's just get it on. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Well, that's it for another video, you guys. Let me know what you think about the steering wheel. I'm really excited to get the car back on the road and to take it out for a spin now that I've got my own brand new customized steering wheel. Craft Customs, Carter and the crew down in Texas, thank you so much for all of your hard work and uh, for giving me this amazing steering wheel. Folks, you should check out Craft Customs and also stay tuned after the credits because you're gonna see the disassembly and the reassembly of the steering wheel performed by Carter down in Texas. All right, guys, more podcasts, more video, more stuff coming soon in general. The summer is in full swing here in Minnesota. And uh, as much as it's a little warm for this ginger guy right here, I've got to get out and enjoy it. So I'll be getting this out to drive and I'll be catching it on video pretty soon. See you in another video soon. Take care, bye. Hi, I'm Carter with Craft Customs. And today we're gonna to do a video on how to disassemble and start the process for recovering, reupholstering a Porsche 911 steering wheel. And so we're gonna start with disassembly right now, and then we'll go into the rest of the process. So the first thing that we've got to do on removing the trim off of this steering wheel, which is something a lot of people battle with and not too many people show that, because it is quite a challenging little task to take just the trim off. But we'll start with, with um, removing the airbag spring or, or dislodging it. We just take a little screwdriver pop it in there and pull that spring out of the plate, out of, out of where it was attached. And then that allows us to, I'm gonna do this from behind so you can see what I'm doing, to come in and slide the airbag lock wire out of its holding jig, if you will. Then we're gonna go ahead and start removing the trim. So the first thing I do is heat up the actual steering wheel behind the trim. And I'm using a heat gun. You can get these at Home Depot or wherever. Be careful to keep it moving because you don't want to overheat the rubber, the molded rubber of the steering wheel because you could damage it. So we keep it moving the whole time. And I'm going to do this one spoke at a time. Then I go in with a flat, little bit dull screwdriver and it's smooth. And I slide all the way down as low as I can get that screwdriver in behind it. And then you just pry and 
it's hot, so you pry just a little bit and then move to the other side and pry. And pry. And it's it'll start moving little by little, little by little, but you just gotta encourage it. I wanna say this about the way Porsche designed these trim pieces on most of the later model 911s. In my opinion, it's not a very good design because what they did was glued the trim piece into the rubber of the steering wheel. So that's the key you kind of want to know. You're, you're having to encourage the glue to let loose without damaging the steering wheel. And we use heat and pressure to do that. So we'll continue doing what we were doing. And I just go from side to side until it starts coming up. And this, there's four little trim pieces that little little tabs two here and two here on each one of these spokes there's four tabs that are glued in there and i'll show you when you can actually start seeing the glue but i want to stay as far back as i can each pull that i make i want to keep working my my, my way down you don't want to be prying only right here on the chrome because you could damage the chrome you want to go all the way down with your screwdriver behind the tab areas. And so a little bit of prying on one side and then go to the next side, a little bit of prying. So now you saw that one slip. Look at the white down in there. That's actually the glue on the end of the tab that's holding the tab glued in. Here's a maybe even a better shot right there. That's the glue that Porsche used to put these together. So I'm gonna show you one more, one more spoke. Same thing, just heat it up and then don't do it all in one pry. You're not gonna get that, that's not gonna work. You wanna go down as far as you can with your screwdriver and as your screwdriver allows you to, go from side to side, and as your screwdriver allows you to, you wanna go in further with it, okay? And it's taking force. You're gonna hear weird sounds like that because you're, I've just, my screwdriver popped off of the tab is what just happened. As you see, I'm having to exert a lot of force on this. So what I'm gonna do now that I've kind of got the gap opened up, I'm gonna shoot a little heat up inside of the gap and also on the back and on the, this inside of the curve because I got a tab here and a tab here. So I wanna heat both of those two locations up like that. And again, very few people demonstrate this because it is, it's kind of a scary thing to do if you had never done it before. And uh, it's a little scary if you have done it. And I just, there you go. You saw it just pop loose. So it just took repeated going back and forth. And so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this last, uh, loosen this last spoke, and then I'll show you how to take the trim off the rest of the way. Okay, so now we have the trim piece loose and so we're going to go ahead and just pull it straight off we've got one plug right here so we just activate that plug with a finger on each side and pull that off just push in the tab and it comes right off we can set the trim aside now the the rest of it's pretty straightforward and simple we have two nuts on each of the paddle shifters to remove the paddle shifters Okay, so now we've got our socket wrench and we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the nuts that we just pointed out.
Now this little metal plate that's on the inside under the nuts is also hooked in to the actual paddle shifter. So that plate has to be pulled out first before the paddle shifter will release. Gotta love thread locker. Okay, what I've done is I've loosened the nuts, but on these particular nuts, the screw loosens with it. It's, you're not allowed, it's not allowing us to take the nut completely off. And the screw is also connected from the backside into that plate. So, uh, interesting pore schism there. So we're gonna go ahead and use our needle nose and grab that plate and twist that plate what we've got to do is get it out from underneath the paddle shifter right there. So that's the spot that I'm working to get loose. Let me get the bottom screw a little bit looser. There we go. And then that allows the paddle shifter to come on out. Feed your wire through and that's the paddle shifter. So we'll do the same thing with the other one. And then I take a little piece of tape and put it on each paddle shifter to show that this is the left, that one's the right. Okay, so that covers the disassembly of the steering wheel. In, at the end of the project, when you're reassembling it, I'll just say very simply, you're doing exactly opposite of what you just did. However, the trim piece is so easy to put back on. You just slide it on and snap it back in place. I, I do not ever re-add glue to these tabs to re-glue it back in because it's just kind of ridiculous how they did that in the first place. So you just, after you've got your paddle shifters back on, you just slide your trim back in place and push it into the tab, the tabs into the holes. And that's it. Okay, so next we've got all of our parts here. I've already uh, slid the airbag into a bag. Uh, we're going to put the paddle shifters into a baggie and I've marked each paddle shifter to know right where they go so it's easy to get everything back quickly when we're finished. And then we keep all of the parts for every job in its own job box. So there's no chance of it getting mixed up with any of the other jobs in process. So the next thing we're gonna do is take off the leather cover. And I've already just for speed gone, in, gone ahead and carefully removed the stitches that are holding the steering, the uh, leather onto the steering wheel. And so it's, it's a fairly simple process at that point in time to just go in and remove the leather. And because we're replacing the leather on this steering wheel, I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of the seams where it was sewed together. Just to make it a little quicker and easier to remove it. It. So this steering wheel is ready to pattern the new leather and to put the new cover together. So here we are cutting the last bit of the leather out for the pattern and then we will put the pattern together. Now that we have the leather cut and ready to go through the next steps of making the pattern, a lot of people don't understand what goes into the process of making a steering wheel cover or upholstering a steering wheel. And just to give you an idea, the different steps that we do, the making of the pattern itself, 
the literally layout of the, the leather and exactly how it needs to fit on the steering wheel is about a two hour process for every single steering wheel. And we do over 2000 different makes and models of vehicles here at Craft Customs. But um, in addition to that, there's a lot of other steps. We're gonna show you next, the after the cover is finished, the sewing process, uh, as well as some of the QC steps that we go through after everything's done. QC is our quality control and final make ready steps. That entire process can take anywhere from 20 or 30 minutes on a fairly simple steering wheel up to an hour, sometimes even two hours for the make ready on a more difficult steering wheel. Uh, also, the how the what types of stitches we use. We have six different stitch patterns that we use here at Craft Customs. The simplest stitch pattern can take about an hour to sew it. Uh, and again, we're going to be going over that here in a few minutes. Uh, but the the more difficult stitches can take up to about three hours, sometimes even more, to sew a steering wheel. So a lot of people don't understand that a steering wheel literally can take anywhere from on the low side, five or six hours to upholster a steering wheel. On the high side, about 12 hours um, to upholster a more difficult uh, steering wheel with a more difficult stitch. Okay, and the next thing that we are doing is finishing sewing the cover together. So now this cover will go through a couple more steps before we actually put it on the wheel and we'll be back. Okay, so now we are putting the cover onto the steering wheel. And as you see, we've got the cover already put on it and we're in the process. It's got to be lined up 100% accurately. This one has a dial, a 12 o'clock racing stripe or dial uh, at the uh, 12 o'clock position. And if that is off even a 16th of an inch, it actually makes it look an eighth of an inch off and makes it not correct. So the time that goes into getting a dial to be accurate, it takes about an hour to, to make the dial and then get it accurate. And we run into a problem when you're sewing it, it scoots the dial over. So there's a number of things that we go through to make sure that that doesn't happen. And so the dials are all 100% accurate. The, um, the next thing that we do is we have to make sure that it is lined up perfectly and it has to be shaped perfectly to the steering wheel. The, there is literally one sixteenth inch of variance that we have of play that we have to work with. Our patterns have to be within a sixteenth of an inch of perfect. And so that is a proprietary thing that we do here at Craft Customs. And then we also adhere all leathers to the steering wheel. And so we use a special proprietary adhesive here. Uh, we put it on and then we lay the wheel down into place and then it will be ready to sew at that point in time. Okay, so for our next step, we'll be sewing the steering wheel, stitching the cover onto the steering wheel. And all of that is done by hand. We have about six different stitches that we do here at Craft Customs. I'm gonna be demonstrating the uh, baseball stitch, which is the simplest stitch and the probably the most prevalent stitch out there. And a couple of things are, the cover at this point in time has to fit perfect. It can't have an overlap and it can't be not closing. So our patterns, have to be made exact. And we have a proprietary method of making the patterns here that make sure that the patterns are perfect every time as, as a fit. Um, also, uh, the stitches, each one takes its own time. A baseball stitch is the simplest stitch and they usually take between an hour and an hour and a half to stitch a steering wheel. There's some of the stitches that we use that take about two hours and some of the stitches that we the stitch patterns that take 
three to four hours to do. So you can kind of imagine that about a 30% of the make of the steering wheel is, is in the pattern, 30 to 25%, something like that, is in just stitching the pattern on. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the baseball stitch here. And, um, and again, every single steering wheel is sewn by hand. Uh, each stitch, each hole is done by hand um, on every steering wheel in the world. So um, it, it, it's not something that's done on a machine and that just automatically happens. But that's the method for doing the baseball stitch. Um, and I will work my way all the way around uh, the, through all the holes. And then our steering wheel will move to the next step which is our make ready. And we go through and put it through a process, series of processes of uh, cleaning, of, of correcting the, you know, the, the stitches, um, everything to make that steering wheel ready to ship. And, um, and then it goes through a quality control check at the very end of the process where our quality control manager approves it before it is shipped out from the Craft Customs shop okay so now we have our porsche 911 gt sports steering wheel all reupholstered and it's ready to go through some of its next steps i wanted to talk briefly about the leather qualities that we use everything that we use on all of our steering wheels is an automotive grade leather only which is a much higher grade leather than other leathers available on the market uh, because of the oils in our hands and the cleaners and all that that happen in a car that don't happen elsewhere. Um, but not only that, we also use higher grade imported automotive leathers. And so this leather is actually a Ferrari leather that we use on this, even though it's a, a Porsche uh, for the racing style. We also use Porsche leathers, Lamborghini leathers, um, and Lexus leathers, Mercedes leathers, uh, BMW leathers. A lot of our leathers are specifics to vehicles, um, but we use a number of different high-end leathers only though. The next step that the steering wheel is gonna go to, as you can tell, it's still got threads hanging out of it. So it's gonna go through, before we reassemble it, it's gonna go through some quality control steps and make ready steps. So it'll go into make ready next where all the stitches are uh, evaluated and checked to make sure that the stitches are going in the exact right layout and all that has to be tweaked during this make ready process. We go through, check all the stitches, tie the knots, we trim the ends in so that they fit the car exact and the airbag and horn pad, the back cover, whatever's needed on one steering wheel to the next. And then it goes through a final inspection where our QC manager will approve or kick it back uh, for further um, make ready or quality inspections. So that's all the steps that our steering wheels go through. We'll be back next to show you the final finished and QC'd steering wheel ready to ship out. Okay, so now we are at the point of completion on the Porsche 911 GT Sport steering wheel. I went on and reassembled it, put the trim back on it uh, since we've already gone over how to take it off. The putting it back on, it's exactly opposite, uh, much easier. The uh, Just wanted to show you a little bit. It's already gone through QC. We talked about the stitches a little bit before, but I just wanted to show you the detail of the stitch pattern. Uh, how each stitch has got to be exactly right in order to maintain the integrity of the of the final product and so that is the finished 911 and it is ready to ship back out